This discussion will be about library files. Library files are a collection of related objects or related functions that are grouped together. When you first started programming in 135, you were told that part of the linking phase is to pull the library files into the executable along with your object code. And we kind of just said, trust us, it'll do what it needs to do. Well, now I want to talk about creating those library files and using those library files. So for instance, let's say that you write functions to do a specific type of sort. Um, why include those functions and copy paste them into every program? You could put them into a library and then just link that library into the executable when you compile. Libraries can either be static libraries, which will have a .a extension, or they can be shared libraries, often called dynamic libraries, and they have .so extensions. The difference is during the link and executable phase. So static libraries are linked during the linking phase and actually become part of the executable code. So the static library object code will be part of that executable code along with your object code. So it makes the executable code larger, but the advantage at runtime is now that is part of your executable code. So when the operating system needs to load your program into memory, it doesn't need to go searching for the library code because the library code is part of your executable. Shared libraries or dynamic libraries are um, verified for all necessary symbols at compile time, but the object code is not part of the executable. So now your executable is a little bit smaller. But then when the program is run, the necessary shared libraries need to be found and loaded into memory and then attached to that copy of the program. So the load time is longer for the initial person that needs to load that shared library. However, the advantage of shared libraries is that if another student is using that library and has already loaded it in the, into memory or another user, and that library is in memory, now it doesn't have to be loaded again. Just that one copy is shared by all running programs that use it. So we'll talk a little bit about static libraries and how we create those. Again, static libraries um, are part of the executable and they end in a dot A. And the reason for the dot A is because they are also referred to as archives. And they are created using the AR command for archives. So if I want to create a archive library, the first thing that I need to do, I have two C programs in this directory. One is uh, readn.c and one is writen.c. So the first thing I need to do is create object code. And to do that, I'm going to use the GNU CC compiler, uh, sorry, the GNU C compiler, and do a dash O, sorry, a dash C, and compile that, and then I'm going to do writen.c. So now I have a readn.o file, and I have a writen.o file. So those are the object code for those libraries. And now what I want to do is I want to combine those two objects into a library. So I'm going to do rc, and then I want to create an rc. So c stands for create, and r stands for replace. So if there's already an existing copy of, of the read n or write n function in this library, it'll be overwritten with the new copy. And you can do a man page on R A R to see the other options, but RC is replace and create. And now I'm going to name my library sockutils.a, and then I'm going to list the object code that I want to include in that. So now I have a sockutils.a file. The AR command will add those functions to the library and also index the archive. On older systems, you used to have to run a separate command to do the indexing, but the new version of AR will index it at the same time. Then if I want to compile a program, let's just say I have a program called program one and I want to use this library, I do a dash L dot. And what that says is it says to look in my local, my my current directory dot the current directory to find the library and then I'm going to do a dash L uh, sock utils. Okay, 
And that's how you would compile it. I don't have a program 1.c in this directory, so it's going to give me an error. But the dash L, capital L, says where to look beside your live path for the library file. And then the dash L names it the name of the library without the dash A. You don't need that. I can run the AR command with a T option. And that will give me a table of contents, or it'll tell me what functions are in that library. So you can see in that archive, in that static library, I have the readn.o object code and the writean.o object code. The other type of libraries that we mentioned were shared libraries or uh, dynamic libraries. Compiling and using shared libraries is similar to static libraries, except that shared libraries must be compiled using position independent code or PIC. When object files are generated, there, you don't have any idea when you compile those where in Remy they will be inserted in a program that's going to use them. So if we have everybody in the class writing a program and using one shared library, the different programs that use the same library, each program is going to be loaded into a different memory address. So all of the jump calls, or if assembly language you're used to the go-tos, all of the go-to or jump calls and subroutine calls need to use relative addresses instead of absolute addresses. So the shared library code needs to specify relative addressing. So that's called position independent code or PIC. So with the GNU compilers, there's a compiler flag that will create position independent code. And that's done with a dash F pick either upper or lower case on the compilation command. So when I'm compiling, if I did uh, something like GCC prog 1.c, and I did a dash F pick, dash F capital PIC or PIC lowercase. Okay. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to do um, dash F pick and I want to do again read n dot C and write n dot C. So again, I'm going to do the dash C. So I'm just creating object files and not linking. And I'm going to do the dash F pick to specify that I want to do position independent code. If I want to also specify what that I'm going to create a shared library. So shared libraries, the actual library, instead of using the AR command like you do for archives, shared libraries are compiled using the system compiler. So I'm going to use GCC to create the shared library. And what I need to do, though, instead of compiling or saying I want to create object, I need to specify that I'm going to uh, create a shared library. And that's with the dash shared option. So I'm going to do the GCC now. I created my two position independent object files. So now I'm going to do GCC dash shared. And the object I want to create is sockutils.so. And I want to create my right end and my right, my read end and write end objects. So I'm going to create this shared object file, so shared object. I'm going to use these two object files, read n and write n, and I'm, this dash shared indicates that I'm creating a shared library. So I just did that command, and now one of the other commands that are useful in with shared libraries is the nm command. So I can do an M, nm which will show the symbol table. So it's going to show a little bit more than just our functions, but if I specify the to show defined symbols only, and M um, shows a symbol table, like I said. So, so the dash defined only shows defined ones, and you're going to see some things that are system generated, but here's my read end function, right? Here's my read end function and my write end function that I added to that library. For shared libraries during runtime, you need to make sure that that shared library is in your LD library path. 
environment variable. So if we look at mine, which is going to be quite long, but I need to make sure that the shared library I want to use when I compile is in the that one of these directories. The default for most compilers is to use shared libraries because they're more efficient at runtime because various programs are sharing them. So if a shared library is available, the compiler will use a shared library for most compilers, and that includes the GNU C, C++ uh, compilers. To specify the use of a static library, you can directly specify the file name, um, just like you do an ordinary .o file, or you can use that uh, um, the dash L uh, specifying the library option with the that we showed you up here where we did sock utils, but you notice we didn't do the dot A. So it's going to pick the shared. If I want to specify that I want to use the static library, um, again, I could have done just sock utils dot A and specified it like I would have normal dot O file in my compilation, or I can use the dash static option for the linker phase. Um, and there should be some kind of option like re referencing static for any compiler that you use. So that's a little bit about libraries. Again, static libraries um, are part of the executable, and they're created using the AR command. And shared libraries or dynamic libraries are not part of the executable, and all programs accessing that a shared library at runtime will access the same copy and memory, so it saves some load time at memory if you're not the first program to access it. But you have to compile the contents of a shared library using position independent code with the dash fpick option, and then you use the compiler to create it.